We are live. Welcome to Young Adult Catholics, everyone, a podcast for young adult Catholics. My name is Janelle. I'm Kian. And I'm Daniel. Uh, today we're going to be talking about in episode number five, Do You Feel Forced to Be Catholic? Um, and we're going to deep dive into our personal experiences. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to talk, talk about the root of why people feel this way. So we're going to allow uh, Kian to deep dive into that. And also before we do that, we're going to pray. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so let's mark ourselves with the sign of love as we say, Father, Son, Holy, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, just thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for our faith. We pray for every single soul in this world. May they come to you, repenting, trusting in you, and believing that you are the one true God. Um, just thank you, Lord, for this episode. May you allow us to say what you need to say to the people who need to hear, which includes us. Um, may we just speak upon this topic of why people are leaving your church and how we can bring people back and help them realize the church is a place for sinners, the hospital for sinners, and a place that is welcome to all. Um, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Bless you, Lord. Bless the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, and all God's angels and saints, pray for us. in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. So, as Cara said, before we dive into the specific question, the specific title of our podcast episode today, um, I'm going to share some thoughts real quick on like the root of that topic, the root of that question. And a question that I want to pose to all of you, um, I'll talk more about it, but the question that I want to pose to you guys and leave some room to pause to like have it sink in is, have you ever wondered why was there a bad tree in the Garden of Eden in the first place? Why was there a bad tree in the Garden of Eden in the first place? And the reason I bring that up is, that before we could understand um, the the even possible even just the possibility or um, the gift of being able to choose whether you were forced to be Catholic or um, choose to stay Catholic or choose to leave the church is because of the gift of free will, and this connects to the question because. Basically, it says in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 396, you guys could check it out, 396, um, by putting a bad tree in the Garden of Eden in the first place, God basically gives us the power to choose to love him or the power to choose not to love him. And the reason why he did this is so that we would have the free will that would allow us to love, you know? Because true love isn't force. True love mm -hmm. isn't like, isn't a rule, you know? True love is something that you willingly choose to do. And God knew this. So he offered the law. The only one rule that he told Adam and Eve is, um, I'll go into it more later again, but basically what he says is that you shall not eat from the fruit of the tree or else you shall die. Mm -hmm. And it sounds very like morbid, but he places that rule again because of free will. He, he said that, um, well, he didn't say this, but through like, through sacred scripture and through Bible study and just by studying the Bible, um, we learned that if if you didn't have the choice if we didn't have free will then we would either be robots or slaves to god and god didn't want us to be a slave to him he desired a loving relationship and he knew that there is no love without freedom no love without freedom so he placed that question there and what we learn later on like if you go through like the first um part of Genesis with Adam and Eve and just that whole ordeal and um, 
talking about how God created the world, we learned that um, like God basically knew in a way, oh, I think he knew in a way that, um, that Adam and Eve were going to sin mm -hmm. because it's so tempting. And because um, like he knew, he probably knew that the serpent was in the garden, but because he knew that there, there's that opportunity for us to fail, he created in a way a backup plan. He created the Sabbath day. And through the Sabbath day, on the seventh day when he rested, basically he declared by resting on the seventh day after creating the whole entire world that um, through the Sabbath, he would create a way for us to have opportunities to reconnect with him, even after we sin, even after we fall, even after we fail. And so that's why um, some history, that's why Sunday is so important. That's why the seventh day of the week is so important to um, either take a break from work or um, reconnect with God through daily, I mean, through Sunday mass and just keeping the Sabbath holy. And that's the whole point of that. And so, yeah, that's, that's the root of this whole entire question. Do you feel forced to be Catholic? And the truth is that you can't truly be Catholic if you're forced the whole time. Because to be Catholic is to choose to love God mm -hmm. every single time. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that, those are some um, notes on that. And now I'm going to bounce it over to Janelle, um, who has more thoughts on this. Yeah, Kayon, you know, I just wanted to make a comment when you said that um, that God already knew that Adam and Eve were going to sin. I, I think, and again, sorry for those who are listening, I'm going to try to find the source for this after, but I remember a focused missionary, her husband um, studied in ge in geology, um, I believe in Steubenville, and so they actually did learn that like God did know, um, I think it's in the, you know, in the Bible that indicated like how God knew, and that's why that's why actually, yeah, that's why the devil fell in the first place is because he knew that Jesus was to be born of a woman because the devil was one of the highest angels too, um, closer to God, a seraphim, um, or higher than the seraphim, if I remember. Yeah, so higher. yeah, higher than the seraphims, um, which is real quick. There's like nine choirs of angels, but we're going to go into that some other time. Um, so why are you saying that? That just reminded me that, um, that they... They, he knew that Adam and Eve were going to sin. And sorry if you can hear my dog in the background. Anyway, uh, so just wanted to continue on. Thanks, Ken, for uh, explaining that as well, because it's uh, something we all need to know, too, is that we do have free will. Um, at the end of the day, though, like if, we, if you feel that you were forced, um, we have to remember that this is the one and only Church of God. Um, in Catechism of the Catholic Church 817, this is the one and only Church of God. Um, you know, Jesus told Peter, which is, for those who are Catholic, you know, you're very familiar with this, but Peter is our first Pope. Why? Because Jesus told Peter, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. We're the only church that comes straight from Jesus, that we have a lineage, literally, which is, if you see the line of popes we have, um, it's going to lead to Jesus. You're going to see our history. Yeah, not every pope was good, okay? So relax for those who are ready to attack, you know? Um, they're humans too, but at the end of the day, we all lead back to Jesus. This is the church um, that will bring us to heaven. So man, that's why we have many saints, and a lot of the saints are martyrs, that, meaning they died for the faith. Uh, they died for Jesus because they realized the importance of upholding Jesus' church. You know, I think coming up this week, um, we have the memorial, the feast of, uh, I think it's St. Alex, Zhao, um, and companions. They were, chi they're Chinese martyrs because China, if you don't know, it's a communist country. You're not allowed to practice the faith. It's an underground church, which is why we should feel lucky that we're able to practice that, you know, even us doing this podcast, like it's the fact that we're able to do it um, is, is uh, very important. And um, we, we have to realize that people have died for the faith. And you have to question yourself too. Like, huh, I wonder why they died for the faith. You know, I wonder why they did this. Like, there's obviously something that they found in the church in Jesus. 
um, that made them do this. And as I mentioned, um, it's a narrow gate to heaven. The church is the only way to salvation. Um, not everyone goes to heaven. And that is fact. That's from the Bible. That's what we learned straight from Jesus, which is why this Catholic church, um, there's a reason why your parents pass it on. There's a reason why their parents pass it on. There's a reason why you're Catholic today. Um, it's because at the end of the day, someone in your family at some lineage somewhere wants to, wanted to save your soul. Um, for those of you who are not Catholic listening to this, um, just know that you can convert, you know, you can find the truth. We have so many converts from other faiths. Um, for example, Trent Horn, was he a convert? Wait, Scott Hahn is a convert. I don't know about Trent Horn. You guys know? No? Um, we'll look into that. that. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Taylor Marshall. Um, I just feel like a lot of people who are very, very strong and educated in the faith have been converts. Um, because after like learning the other religion and they compared it to the Catholic, um, Catholic teachings when they were trying to like debate, they were like, hey, these Catholic teachings, teachings are actually legit and actually true. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of information. But just remember, this is the one true church of God. And we want people to go to heaven, which is why become Catholic if you're already Catholic convert again. Um, I'm going to pass this to Daniel to share a little bit of his own conversion story coming to the faith. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> kind of just uh, going off of what Kayan was saying um, before I go into my testimony, um, I thought of John 15, 15, which is, uh, let me pull it up. <clears throat> I no longer call you slaves, but because the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends because I made known to you everything which I heard from my father. Um, kind of just going back to uh, free will and just like we we know what the father wants of us. Uh, and he, he certainly told us his plan for us and told us the pathway to salvation. Um, and so that's just the beauty of God is that he allows us to choose him or choose our own wills and choose a life without him in hell. Or we can choose a life with him. Um, and so I think that's the beauty of God is that obviously he wants us to be with him and we should want to be with him. But if we have the free will to not be with him, and it's a scary thought to not be with him, but people choose that through their simple ways. Um, but yeah, for me, it goes back. I've always been Catholic, cradle Catholic. Um, shout out to my parents for raising me Catholic. I'm very thankful for it. Um, and uh, I remember I didn't really want to go to classes. I think it was CCD, I think that's called. Um, and uh, it was boring, uh, but I mean, I, I knew I learned stuff, but as I eventually got confirmed, uh, you know, I was like, okay, well, what's next? I don't know what's next. I'm, a, I'm an adult in the faith. I'm 16 years old. I'm an adult in the faith. I don't know what to do. How do I grow my faith more? Uh, and so then at church, um, what's it called? About a year after getting confirmed, they were asking for volunteers to help in the confirmation program. And that's where I started serving in the church and I learned a lot more. And that's where I really grew in my faith. Um, but yeah, definitely growing up, going back, um, it was not something I wanted to do, but I'm grateful I didn't. And um, looking back, I wish I put more attention into like being present and actually wanting to listen, not just like go there for an hour, hour and a half and then go home. And nothing was retained, nothing was implemented in my life. It was simply just to get it done, just so I could get my first communion or first reconciliation or um, get uh, confirmed. But um, looking back now, um, <clears throat> I'm grateful I did it. And now it's like, how can I teach, hopefully if I have kids one day, teach my kids the importance of this, these classes. Like, why am I doing this? Why am I... The, the whys, um, the why I believe this is the faith that you should learn as well, um, and how valuable it is to our life and our salvation. Um, so yeah, just realizing, yeah, I didn't want to be there. I didn't care for it, but now I'm grateful it happened, and how can I continue to grow and then bring other people to the faith um, in a loving manner, you know, not forcefully like, hey, if you don't convert to Catholicism, you're going to hell, but rather, hey, there's a God that loves you so dearly and just wants to spend eternity with you, which is intimidating. But <clears throat> um, I think just inviting people into divine intimacy with Christ um, and divine relationship with Christ is 
the goal for Catholics, it's, um, you know, what we are told at the end of Mass, you know, uh, go out and spread the good news. I feel like that's our, our mission. Once we have the news spread to us, whether that's through friends, family, um, then it's our duty to do that same thing for others and bring others towards Christ. So, can yeah, definitely. Um, I I can relate a lot when it comes to like really diving deeper into the faith through service. Um, for those of you who don't know me, or even those who do know me, um, I was also a cradle Catholic. I I I didn't just like go through all the sacraments and go to mass and stuff, but I also attended like a private school education from K through 12. And there, it has its pros, like learning more about the what's of the church and the teachings, but it also has a lot of cons where um, a lot of times it just felt like rules. It just, it wasn't inviting. It wasn't exciting or something that people would view as um, a positive experience. When I think back on, like talking and having conversations with past classmates that I had back in middle school, elementary school, high school. There's a lot of things that a lot of them wish that they could have changed. But what I was also very blessed with is um, growing up in a community that applied being Catholic. And it's the CFC community where I met Daniel and where I met Janelle. And as like a womb to tomb um, ministry, while I was learning all these what's about the church um, through my education, I was also learning about the importance of what it means to be a child of God and how to create a deeper relationship with Christ and who the Holy Spirit is and all that kind of stuff. So it, it definitely helped me. But even with all of those tools in my life, I still had to, I still had to convert. You know, even if you grew up Catholic, you have to still experience a lot of conversion or else, like, how are you going to fall in love with God? You know, when it's just like going through the motions, doing the routines, doing the rituals and all that, like, sure, you're doing that, but that's not what makes you Catholic. What makes you Catholic is the very seed of it, that relationship that you create with God, the faith that you, where you say yes first to God, to God's invitation to want to have a relationship with him. And I, I was able to develop that relationship with him through service, through serving at church first at, um, <laughs> it's called the video audio library at my, at my church. And basically they would um, allow parishioners to rent, movies or books um about catholicism and i did that for a couple years and it was like okay yeah this is cool i i know about these sources and stuff but i never like really dove into it myself and then i started um later on i started serving confirmation and that really opened my eyes to like an unbiased view of um, being catholic because a lot of the people there like that i noticed like the kids there um they they didn't attend a private school education they they went to a public school and like their source of um, information about the faith and growing in it was through confirmation itself um because as a kid they weren't really as catechized and um that's where i learned like you know i've been learning more and more about who god is i want to make him known more and it was through serving there at the church and then also serving in YFC, um, the Youth for Christ, and um, seeing how like charismatic, uh, how charismatic ministry could help evangelize the truth also um, through like helping people to see how their relationship with Christ is different. You know, it's, it's different for each person. Um, so it's it's been a journey. Those are just like a few things, but um, I I would say that I grew up Catholic, but I wouldn't say that I was forced to be Catholic. And I am grateful for the experiences that I've had, both the good and the bad, um, because service definitely brought a lot of healing to my life, especially when I suffered from major depression and suffered from anxiety. It was 
the church, it was the faith, it was God who really helped bring me back. So yeah. Janelle? Yeah. Um, so like, first I just want to remind everyone, like, we encourage everyone to take the time to learn about the Catholic Church. Um, you may not have been taught the beauty correctly. I think we hear a lot of like, oh, the reason why people leave the church is because what they think the Catholic Church is instead of what it actually is. Um, this is usually because of poor catechesis, which is basically, you know, the teaching of the church. Um, I'll be honest, they've been watering down the teachings since before Vatican II. So, you know, your parents may not have been really taught the beauty because of poor teachings on their, for, from them, for them um, in the schools they went to. And just remember, there's so many resources for you to look at and to explore. That's what happened with me. Um, I feel like, I would say cradle Catholic, but I feel like it's cultural cradle Catholic because um, my dad is from Mexico, my mom's from the Philippines, and they were, they're just Catholic because their countries are so Catholic. Um, and, and I would say that they most definitely did not really teach me um, the beauty of the church in the way I think would have been very beneficial. Um, and and I can't necessarily blame them because, you know, it's even in their generation, what they were being taught in church or in the, their catechism schools was already being watered down. Um, so my own conversion story had to be like in in high school um, because I was getting drawn into the Protestant church, actually, because I didn't know. Like, I was like, oh, these hardcore Hillsong worships are so cool. But the reason why it's so cool, it's because that's all they really have. They don't have the sacraments. Uh, sorry. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I, um, I had my own conversion. Like, as Kay Ann said, it was really through the ministry. Um, this Couples for Christ is the family ministry, as we mentioned in our other videos. The youth is the youth portion of it. Um, during their what the first retreat that I went to, that's where I really found and fell in love with Jesus. And from there, I decided to say, hey, I need to check out the Catholic Church because obviously I've been like, I don't know a lot of it. Like, I don't know the significance of mass. I don't know the reason why we believe in the things we believe in. So with that being said, y'all, like, please, 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 like, if you're in, if you were in my position, like, if you're in this position of like, well, like, I don't know, like, I don't really know about the Catholic Church, I don't like how they don't believe in this, well, be sure to look it up, and be sure to reach out to people, and be like, hey, so how come we don't believe in this, like, why, why is it, because there's so much history, you know, we have, we're unpacking so much history, so many years of history, um, and everything's watered down now, so just know that there's so much beauty in researching, um, I also wanted to continue on by saying, um, you know, we have to remember that a world without God, oof, is, we, we can't do that. We cannot have a world without God. Now, today in secularism, um, this complete independence of man, you know, a Bishop Athanasius Snyder, so he's the Bishop of Kaz Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. If you guys know how to say that. Oh, no, actually, Bishop of Karagan. No, Kazakhstan. I'm totally butchering that. I'll be sure to put it in the comments below the correct spelling. But he um, to has, so for him, he's he grew up um, during the communist times of Russia. Like he was, he was removed from his home, his family, they had to, him and so many people had to practice Catholicism underground because of this. And now what he's saying is like, because he's already seen that, he's seeing the effects of what's going on today, um, where man does not want to be, man does not want God involved. Um, and that's why people who like felt forced to be Catholic or whether it's good or bad, you know, they're leaving the church. But the thing is we need God, like we need God to help bring us the true values that we need in society, to teach us love, to teach us um, how it is to be one and united with God. Um, I know Kayan has, um, you know, some information too about some of the people, so I'm gonna pass it back to her. Okay. <laughs> um, something that I, I hope that I'm following along from what you said. Um, something that um, really stuck with me was talking about how, um, how, I'm sorry, y'all, my head's, my head's spinning, um, like a world without God, um, how, like, okay, let me bring it back, so the devil, 
he he likes to test our free will a lot. He likes to test our free will a lot. And this is shown even from the beginning of, um, and this is, uh, go back. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, I'll bring up again what I was about to start talking about like after this. So what I'm going to be talking about is um, the screw tape letters. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of that book. Um, the screw tape letters by C.S. Lewis. It was actually a book that he wrote dedicated to J.R.R. Tolkien, the, um, the, the person who wrote The Lord of the Rings. They for those of you who don't know, they actually had like a good friendship, but they were like on opposite ends where like one of them was just Christian, the other was Catholic. That's some background. So the screw tape letters. It's about um, Wormwood, this junior demon tempter, and he's mentored by um, his uncle named Screwtape, who's a senior demon. And basically it talks about how um, how easy it is and how like divisive um, the demons and the devil really try to lure you down the wrong path that isn't the path towards righteousness. And what happens is um, Screwtape, the demon tempter, the, the senior demon, he tells his nephew Wormwood that the best he tells him the best way to secure damnation of mankind. And they talk back and forth about this man that they call the patient. It's their patient who they're trying to bring down to hell. And Wormwood was like super excited. Like, yeah, I can't wait to find out the best ways to like make mankind um, commit the worst, the worst possible sins ever. But then screw tape stops him. And he basically says, no, no, no. Like, to make them do the worst um, sins ever isn't the way to go. The, the way to go is the safest road to hell is a gradual one, a gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turns, without milestones, without sign points. And that's so what's I've happening been, right now. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so this is literally um, a quote from the actual book that I just said. When he advises um, Wormwood in a letter about that, he's basically talking about how you don't want a person to do like the one big thing and then after that they fall straight down. No, they want you to make it gradual so that it's like it becomes permanent. It's, it's something that isn't just um, impulsive, but something that is cultivated. Mm -hmm. So cultivating a life of sin, cultivating a life, a world without God. And basically he starts um, explaining in, la in later letters to his nephew in Wormwood, the different purposes that God and the devils have for the human race, how different they are. And um, he says that like God, God wants servants who become sons. Okay, who so basically he wants he doesn't want slaves, he wants mankind to have free will, right? But then the devil says they want cattle who become food. They want um they want mankind to just become oh <laughs> mushy. Um, they want mankind to just become um like animals basically who become food, easy to consume and easy to just trick and fall deeper and deeper and another thing that said also is that god wants people to be concerned with what they do like thinking about thinking before they act that's what god wants right because you think before committing a sin but what the devil wants is people to keep thinking about what will happen to them it's kind of like for example when um for example, like, oh, for example, you're in a situation and it's like you're about to get caught about something. And because you get caught, you, you just make the deep, you make the lie even deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like a white lie to just a mortal sin lie. And that's what they mean by like the devil wanting you to think about what will happen to you rather than God um, who who wants mankind to be concerned with what they do, the intentions, the action, the circumstance, 
everything leading up to the actual action. So in other words, just by this book called The Screw Tape Letters, the demons toy with people's free will until they become slaves to sin. And again, as Janelle said, like this, this is what's happening in our real world now. And I see it like with um, friends who, who used to be Catholic or I grew up Catholic Catholic with in um, private school education, I see a lot of them have chosen not to be Catholic anymore. And I think it's because of like the slow, gradual slope and road to hell. Um, not saying that like all of them are going straight to hell, but saying that they may be on, on the path to hell and that they need to think about um, what they do versus what will happen to them. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Sorry in the beginning, I was like super like, woo, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's, I mean, it's a lot to, you know, to like bring it all together too. Um, Daniel, any thoughts? Yeah. Um, Jose Maria, Saint Jose Maria Escriva, he talks about, I forgot how he says it, but the gradual incline. So I think um, the devil is smart, not to give him credit too much, um, but he's smart in the way he realized the way God bring souls to heaven so he just distorts that and manipulates that same way but to bring people to hell um so um jose maria he says like there's a gradual incline to get to heaven and say yes to christ and it's this daily saying of yes this daily conversion there's, for most people it's not just one big moment oh wow christ came i saw christ in my prayer and now i'm catholic for the rest of my life it's this daily yes to god um, and in the same way, it could be the other way of daily yes to the devil and his will uh, for you and wanting you to uh, spend eternity in, in the fires of hell. Um, and so for God, he wants you to continue to trust him every single day. Walk with him. Walk with him. Trust him. Trust his plan. Even though you might not see where he's leading to, just trust him. The same way the devil, he's like, trust me, trust me. He's like, you know, take a bite of this apple. It's not, there's no punishment. And then... Um, and then Adam and Eve have to like, you know, come up with something to tell God like why they did this. And and going back to KN of like, the devil's already getting you to think of like how you can make a lie to cover up what you did wrong. But Christ is like trying to like show you like, here's the reason why I want you to do this because I love you. I want what's good for you. Um, so yeah, it's just the the serpent the devil's really good he's really good at distorting things and like yeah. just he he realizes how god brings people to him he tries to do the same way in a distorted manipulated perverted way to bring people to him in his home of hell um and so we have to be very conscious of everything that we do every single day and how it affects our soul um because everything we do can and will affect our soul and the souls around us. That's the other thing that we forget is that who we're becoming, we then start to influence the people around us and they'll become people that either could be people of God or people of the devil. Uh, so it's super important to be on the right path and to do things like a daily examination of conscience and see where your soul is at. Evaluate where your soul is at so that you can realize I'm practicing my faith. I'm living out my faith. I'm learning about my faith. I'm, I'm keeping a daily conversation with Christ or not just Christ, maybe uh, the saints, Mama Mary, inviting people into my prayer life, inviting people into my life because that's the other thing too. Um, when you're on this journey uh, with the devil to hell, you're by yourself. But on the journey to heaven with Christ, you have so many people who are, want to be with you, supporting you, loving you, starting with God, the Holy Trinity, starting with Mary and Joseph, your guardian angel, and then all the angels and saints, and then all the people that God's placed in your life. These are, like, you have a team. But with the devil, you're by yourself, and it's just selfish. Um, it's just the I. There's, it's just I versus team. God is a team player, and he wants to bring you to him. Um, and he does it in such a loving way, too. He never rushes you. He never pressures you. He gives you free will to choose him every day. And I think that's even a better thing to give us free will because in really choosing God, like we're falling in deeper love with him. Um, and so that daily, yes, it's just like, man, I just love God. Even in the good and the bad, I like love him. And I just want to continue to follow him. And if you do that, 
you'll end up in a good place and hopefully end up in that good place with other people too. So, you know. Oh, near Janelle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> something I want to add on from that that I really love is how you're talking about like falling in love more with God and um, I want to emphasize that by saying like fall in love and stay in love with God. Yeah. You know, like cultivating that relationship, right? It, it's not always easy. It's not always like roses and butterflies and happiness. <laughs> um, there's pain in it too. There's sacrifice. But um, something that I came across earlier last week was um, a quote that said, no one can force you to be Catholic. We might not have chosen baptism if our parents chose it for us in our infancy, but we can choose confirmation. We can choose Sunday Mass. We can choose reconciliation to go to confession. We can choose prayer and scripture for ourselves. Like, even if you weren't able to make the choice when you were first born, you're still able to have that free will all throughout the rest of your life to choose God, to fall in love, to stay in love. And another very beautiful quote, it's a little bit longer, but um, it's very beautiful, bear with me. It's by this man na named um, Pedro Arupe. I think he was a priest. And he said, nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in an absolute final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide or will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart, what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Yeah. Love it. Um, I think uh, hearing that, I think uh, to defend why Catholics like to baptize their children at a young age. Um, it's their duty as parents, as Catholic parents, to raise their children in the faith. That's what they say at their, bath, at their um, wedding, um, is to, uh, the priest asks them, do you, I forgot exactly um, the, the priest's words, but basically. Well, you raise are, your children Catholic. Yes, like you know, are open to it. And then the, the, the husband, the, the two, people getting married they say yes um so when you get married in the faith you're agreeing you're saying yes to the lord that if god wants children for you that you agree to raise them up in the faith um and to be those first catechists for your children to be the first people that um to invite your children into the faith um, it's their duty and so like ken was saying just to reiterate um like yeah maybe we weren't old enough a couple of us were maybe a couple months old when we got baptized, but then it's up to us if we want to accept communion, reconciliation, uh, confirmation, <clears throat> and then obviously the sacraments of, uh, or practicing the sacraments, going to Sunday mass, spending time in adoration. That, that's on us at the end of the day. So I don't know if you have any points to know. Yeah, I just wanted to um, first thank you all for listening to our podcast. Um, you know, this is a very, we, we took a lot of time with this um, specific topic just because we know there's a lot of people um, who we know in our lives who do feel forced to be Catholic and some are happy with it. They're like, yeah, like I, I got to explore. I love it. And some are not. Um, so at the end of the day, this is just for everyone. Just know that we're all just trying to get to heaven. The Catholic church is the way to do that. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no uh, gray area. It's, if you want to get to heaven, you have to be Catholic. Um, I, I know I had a little word vomit earlier, but I did want to just bring back, um, end it with Bishop Athanasius Schneider's, <laughs> see word wrong, well, um, his quote, and it's just saying, and this is taken from his book called, um, oh, Vitus, Vitus, no, Christus Vincent. Um, and so I want to end with this, and then I'll pass to Dan to close this in prayer. So he says, now we have reached a peak of secularism, of this complete independence of man, of this enormous anthropocentrism where everyone decides for himself what is true and what is good or evil. Such secularism 
brings us a horrible and cruel society. We are witnessing this. It is cruel. And what is the result? Egoism. Secularism leads to egoism. We have now reached a peak of egoism, and egoism is cruel. It, the saying is, only I and no one else. Um, it is hell. Ultimately, this means when someone else is impeding or hindering what I want to do, I will kill him, I will destroy him. And I know that's pretty intense, um, but we have to remember that that's why it's so, that's why we're trying to bring people back to the church. That's why we're saying this, because we need God. We know our society needs God. We see this through the killing of innocent children. We see this through um, those who are abusing the disabled, those who are eliminating Down syndrome kids. Um, we know that we need God, which is why we're sharing this with you. So please, 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 we encourage you. Um, look at the reasons for the faith. Practice the sacraments. Um, you know, please go back to this video if you need to, to, to see all our different references and to be reminded of why it's important to be Catholic. Um, that being said, I'm going to pass it to Daniel. Thanks again, everyone, for listening to our podcast. So uh, to wrap it up and, you know, just go over the main points again. We started all the way back in the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve and the fall and just free will in that uh, sense. The screw tape letters from uh, C.S. Lewis and just um, allowing us to realize that the path to hell is kind of a daily conversion to that and also daily conversion to Christ. You can choose Christ every single day. You have options. Um, what are you going to choose? Um, ultimately, as Catholics, we're going to choose Christ every single day to fall in love with him and to stay in love very much the same way as matrimony, right? You get married with that person, you choose to be with that person for life um, until death do you part. Um, and then we just kind of jumped into um, more examples of that. And uh, we just hope that you guys can find something out of this um, podcast and really just start asking questions instead of, oh, I, I don't agree with the church on this or that. Figure out the whys on why the church teaches what it teaches and believes the why it believes. Um, because it's really easy to be like, I don't like this and that. But you're just being lazy and not trying to research why. The why, that's so much what the Catholic faith is about, is the why. Uh, why Christ died for you, you know. And why he wants to be in relationship with you. Why he loves you so much. Why he loves his, his brothers and sisters so much. Um, so we just invite you guys to really... Spend some time to, if there's something that bothers you about the faith, spend some time to research. Spend some time to learn. Um, and I guarantee you will find the truth. And the truth is Jesus Christ. Um, he's the way, the truth, and the life. Um, so as we wrap up this episode, let's end in prayer as we say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, um, we just pray for every single soul, especially all those who have left the church for whatever reason whether it was trauma, bad experience, uh, bad catechism. I just pray, Lord, that they give your, your most perfect church a second chance uh, and be reminded that the church is ran by imperfect people, but the church itself, your bride, Lord, is perfect uh, and that they can find solace in her, her beauty, her peace, her love, her compassion, her empathy, and her mercy. Uh, and for all the ones, all the people who stay and have stayed in the church, Lord, just help us to grow in more and more love each and every day and continue to say yes to you and convert uh, this daily, have this daily conversion and continue to trust in you, your will for us and uh, get ourselves to heaven and bring others, our brothers and sisters in Christ to heaven. As we say, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are defending us the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, test into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And let us invite your mothers, we say, Hail Mary, hold the Queen of the and all God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. See you guys next time. Yeah.